Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest and welcome back to Bailey Farm. I'm here today because the cosmos have drawn me in and I can't resist cutting some of these beautiful flowers and bringing them back into my studio to see what I might be able to do with them with an echo print. So I'm going to run around here, pick some flowers, and then we're going to jump into the kitchen and see what beauty these summer petals and leaves are going to bring into a bundle dye echo print. Come on, let's go picking. So one of my favorite wildflowers of all time is Cosmos and they have just rows and rows of beautiful Cosmos along with California poppy and some flowers as well as zinnias, all of which are wonderful options for being able to use for echo printing, echo dyeing and bundle dyeing. And one of the things that really caught my eye <laughs> was Coreopsis. Now Coreopsis is an amazing dye plant. I only found this one little tiny plant left on this farm, so I decided today was the right day to pick those. So I'm going to take a handful of these and try it out. How about that for some beautiful, beautiful picking. Thank you, Bailey Farm. I feel so lucky to be able to come out and do this. This is an absolutely gorgeous Friday evening. There are so many people out here picking all kinds of fresh vegetables and fruits. And honestly, it's such an incredible way to spend a Friday evening. Look at those flowers.
telling you I wouldn't be lying if I said I expected that kind of a result. Wow, that blue from the cosmos and the absolute vivid orange of the Coreopsis. I mean, I know that Coreopsis is really a star in the dye world, but that was pretty incredible. There's a couple things I'd like to say about at least one reason why I think that I got such a remarkable result, and that had to do with the pre-treatment with mordant. So alum is one of the most common mordants out there. It is a wonderfully natural way to create a bond so that natural color can adhere to your textile. And alum is an overarching word for actually several different forms of alum. And that can include aluminum sulfate, it can include aluminum potassium sulfate, it can include, as you saw in this video, aluminum acetate. And these are distinctions that can make a difference. With cellulose fibers, aluminum acetate is by far the best option for a mordant treatment. I have not shown aluminum acetate yet in any of my videos and that is because it's not as easily accessible. You will have to buy aluminum acetate from a specialty shop that has products meant for natural dyeing. You can't pick it up in your supermarket like you can with a standard pickling alum, which can be used. You're probably going to have more success there with protein fibers like silk and wool, but that's not to say you can at least try a pickling alum on cotton, for example. You, however, will get a more vivid result if you're using aluminum acetate. So as you saw in the video, I purchased the aluminum acetate from Botanical Colors. It is a wonderful shop. It happens to be here in the Seattle area, and they have so many natural dye products that aren't as easy to find, for example, and you know they're gonna be good quality. So if you're looking for more traditional dye products, like these various mordants and some of the stars in the dye world like Madder and Indigo and Cochineal. Botanical Colors is a great source for those dye products. And full disclosure, I tested out these same flowers with cotton using a soy milk mordant and the result was not great. As a matter of fact, it turned out you could barely see the colors. So that just goes to show you that the mordant is key and can make a huge difference. So if you try something and it doesn't work, try, try again. Maybe switch it up a little bit. See about changing the mordant. Soy milk mordant or soy milk binder is a great option. Again, it's accessible, it's easy, right? You don't have to buy some specialty mordant from a shop, but you will get different results. So don't be frustrated by that. Just keep an open mind, try different things, and love the result that you get for what's being given to you from nature, right? Another thing to point out was that I chose to only steam for 10 minutes. Five minutes and then I rotated it at once in the steam pot or dye pot uh, for another five minutes. And as you saw, the result was incredible. So if you have the time, the textile, maybe some sample pieces and enough dye matter, test out different times in the steam. You will see instructions for steam, for up to an hour, an hour and a half. I've done that. And the effect can be different. And it can differ based upon the different dye matter or the different flowers that you choose to use. Leaves probably would require more time. And as you saw in this one, I had a few leaves in there and they weren't as vivid. So perhaps a little bit longer would have been better for leaves. But for these really strong dye flowers, the 10 minutes was 
absolutely perfect and the results were beautiful. Oh yeah, and one final thing. I chose to do two types of echo print. One that was more controlled and also one that was really free. And the reason I did that was because you should be experimenting. Try out different styles. There are going to be some applications or people for that matter that prefer to have a really tight design and others that may want something more abstract. And I loved the result of both. And it was fun to make both of them for different reasons. So as always, keep experimenting, keep trying out different stuff. You might be surprised with what you get and you might find something new for you to get excited about in your echo print or dye world. So as I'm walking along the flower bed here of Cosmos, I also stumbled across another flower that I, funny enough, had decided I wanted to try out in my dye pot for another video. And that is Rudbeckia or Black Eyed Susan. There is a small patch here at Bailey Farm. So I'm gonna go ahead and sample some of those as well and bring them back so that perhaps next week on Color Quest, I'll be able to look at what Rudbeckia brings to the dye pot. I happen to know that it's supposed to be green. So as someone who struggles to find green in nature, I'm kind of excited to take advantage of the late summer blooms of Rudbeckia, Black Eyed Susan, and see if in fact I will find some green. Thanks so much for being here. I hope you will get out into your local late summer farming area and into nature to see what you may be able to find out there before the fall comes tumbling in. There's some great options in the fall too, but let's see what we can find as summer winds down and provides for us some additional beautiful natural color. Have a great week and I'll see you next Friday. Sippy sippy. A little filming. A little Justin Timberlake. Yeah, a little JT.